Hello everyone, welcome to Grow Your Future. My name is Za, I am your host today, and I am joined by the man who keeps me out of jail, <laughs> Sam Elgeban. Hi guys, hope you've had a nice week. How you doing, Zara? I'm very well. I'm very well, thank you. Have you been doing your end of financial year tax planning? Oh, well that's what I got you for. We'll do that's it, what I got we'll you do it after the session. <laughs> we'll do it after the session. So, episode number six? Yes. For the Money Club series, right? So what do we do the Money Club series? What is it? Just give us a little bit of a rundown. What, what the Money Club series is? We do the Money Club series uh, to get some information out there. Uh, share our experiences, uh, what we've done, what we've seen, what we've seen clients do, what we've actioned ourselves, and just pass on the knowledge, I guess. Uh, and if that can benefit you guys and you, you guys want to have a chat to us, welcome. Comment on the posts and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's just about providing information about finances, which a lot of people don't sort of get exposed to too much or maybe a bit afraid. So it's sort of breaking down that barrier and, and getting some info out there. I feel like people don't talk about money enough. It's right? a taboo like, subject. Yeah, like you and I, we've got this weird obsession with personal finance, right? <laughs> like we just love it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just find that people find it very boring or they sweep it under the carpet. But I tell you what, like when you need money, it's not boring anymore. When you're desperate for funds, it's not boring. You need to when talk you're, about it, right? Yeah. yeah. When you're broke, it's not boring. So I'd rather talk about it now before you get to that stage. That's right. right. Like if you've got, you know, one of your parents is, is gets ill, yeah. right? And you need to foot the medical bill and you've got no money. Money's no longer boring. It's all of a sudden very important. So I think everyone needs to get a firm hold on their personal finances um, and, and really work on growing their net worth uh, so that when the time comes, they can actually, you know, go through it without any stress. Get some education behind you, get some people in your corner like ourselves, um, yeah, and help you along that journey. Yeah, and it's not about just getting rich or anything like that. Like, being rich is great, but, you know, it's just about being financially independent. So the Money Club series is about teaching you guys, as you listeners at home and you viewers, um, to really get a hold of your personal finances and you know, using our experience to help you along the way because we didn't have podcasts back when we were kids, right? So now there's an abundance of information and you know, we wanna give back where we can. So what are we talking about today, Sam? Today, uh, we're talking about goals and targets. Uh, it is linked into sort of finances and I guess personal goals you wanna achieve. So I think um, without them, you're flailing around, right, in life. You need goals, you need targets to strive towards. So whether they're financial goals, personal goals you want to achieve, if you do not have a final destination you're trying to achieve or to reach, you're really just, you're paddling in a boat with nowhere to go, right? You're just going to flounder in the sea. So a uh, very key, key topic, I guess, in terms of what we're talking about uh, and what this podcast is about. So um, I think it's good to touch on this one and um, get some info out there about that. So goals and targets, I, I find that a lot of people don't have them. Right. Like you deal with clients, you know, on a daily basis, just like I do. And we get to look at the insights on, you know, we, we, we uncover the truth, right? When it comes to our clients, we get to see the guys who are making big cash. We get to see the people who have big debt, uh, good and bad. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's really funny because even very successful people, I find that some of them don't even have goals. Mm -hmm. And they could be so much further ahead yep. if they have these targets to work towards. And I guess the reason why we are so big on them, because it's helped me get to where I am. Um, a lot of my clients, for example, they actually require me to help them come up with goals and targets. You're like a soundboard, right? That's right. So it pushes them towards that target and they, they actually achieve it a lot sooner than they think. Um, and goals and targets, for example, I feel that they're, they're, they're not emphasized enough. And there's, there are a variety of ways where you can keep reminding yourself on how to do it and um, you know, to, to help you keep driving towards that target. But I feel that not enough people set, them, yeah. set that target. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to have this employee who used to work for me and he asked me to help him come up with his goals and his targets and all of that sort of thing. He was very sales focused. Yeah. And I said to him, okay, well, what's your target? You know, what's your, what's your goal? Like financially, we're yeah. speaking, right? And he said to me, he goes, oh, he was very hesitant, you know, a million, two million net worth. And I go, well, why don't you make it 10 million, yeah. right? Yeah. Just write $10 million. And he goes, 
oh, I don't want to do that, right? And I said, why? And he goes, well, I don't want to look like an idiot if I fail. Why, and it's not, too big and, and too scary? It, to right? Do. And I said, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, you need that goal. You need something to work towards. If you don't have that thing to work towards, you're not going to get out of bed every morning. Like, for example, if my target was to make a million dollars, like, I'd just stay in bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just not enough, right? It's got to be big, right? It's got to be bigger than what you actually even achieve. Mm. And the reason why it's got, I feel like it's got to be big and you've got to put it out there. So not just for people to know, but for yourself to be reminded, this is what I'm, oh, this is my purpose. I've got to get out of bed to do this, right? So I think one of the, the biggest mistakes people make is that they just, they're just too afraid to fail, yeah. right? That's and then they don't point. set the goal because then they're, they're impressed with themselves yeah. if they don't fail. But what they should be doing is failing on like a consistent basis. Try and achieve your goal, but if you fail, learn, right? And at least you've gotten scared. somewhere. That's at right. least you've gotten somewhere. And this is why I think, um, you know, going on to our next topic uh, is about uh, the difference between goals and dreams, right? And there's a really good quote here, guys, uh, by Denzel Washington, and I'm pretty sure most people would recognize it. Dreams without goals remain dreams and ultimately fuel disappointment. So let's, let's, let's talk about what, you know, good old Denzel is telling us there, right? He's telling us that it's, it's, it's great to have dreams, but if you don't have goals in order to, you know, basically make those dreams a reality, then what's going to happen is that you ultimately you're going to get disappointed because you, you're just sort of grasping at straws. You're not really working towards anything. Like what I like is, you know, figuring out what your dream is, right? And then going, okay, how do I get there? You need to roadmap it. That's right. And the goals are those milestones in between that will keep you motivated, right? Instead of a finance sort of look at it, we could take it like a trip. If you're going to go to the Gold Coast, one, in one go, that's a massive trip, right? You need stops throughout the way. And you achieve those stops, you have a little break, eat, whatever, and you keep going. So I think where people might fall down in this area is they, they will have that big idea, like you're saying, but not have those little milestones to try and achieve to keep them on that path. Is that what you found with a lot of the people you deal with? Yeah, and what, what, what happens is that they, a lot of people have dreams. I find that a lot of people have dreams. Everyone has right? Everyone has dreams, right? And, They're but easy to things, get, right? They're easy to, to formulate. They're just thoughts. That's it. Really? They're just thoughts. And if we don't think of ways to really, uh, I guess, achieve those dreams and turn them into a reality, then they'll always just remain as dreams, as Denzel is saying, right? So what we want to do is go, okay, what's the goal, yeah. right? And how do we reverse engineer that? What are the steps we've got to take to get there? And the beauty of personal finance is that you can measure it. It's a number. Data. Yeah. Right? Like it's just, and if anyone loves data, it's you, Sam, right? I do love numbers. <laughs> so, but anyone can, can, can really analyze their data, right? Because everyone, as we've spoken about in previous podcasts, is a business. So people who are businesses have data and they can measure it. And this is where I think, you know, more and more people need to go, okay, what are my targets in terms of how much I've got to save in tax? How much money I've got to put into the bank, right? What investment am I going to make at the end of the year when I have all of this money? How am I going to increase my income from $100,000 a year to $120,000 a year? What are the steps that I've got to take, right? All of these things are so important. And they, yeah, they, they, they pretty much direct you on your path to your, to your dream, right? So I think what I've seen, uh, and just going back to what you were saying, is people don't have necessarily the, the life goals we have the day-to-day -day goals and monthly goals, right? So today, if you break it down to a simple sort of task, was to come here and I'm gonna do a few things after. So in my head today, today I had planned with certain things I had to achieve or do, but a lot of people won't apply that to their life and what they're doing in 10 years time. They just stick to the short term and they're not planning for those medium and long-term goals, which is, which is where I think a lot of people fall down. That, that, that's a really good point, Sam, because a lot of people that come and see me, for example, wanting to get into property, yeah. they'll say, Zah, I'm ready to buy an investment property. And I go, okay, well, what's the plan? Yeah. Right? Well, oh, well, I just want to buy an investment property. I go, yeah, but what happens after that? Yeah. What's the second, the third, the fourth, yeah. the fifth deal? And they go, oh, we haven't thought that far ahead, but you have to. Yeah. That's the most important thing, having that plan. And that's why here at Luxland, what we've done is we've come up with that 10-year acquisition strategy. And a lot of people look at it on first hand. They look at it and they go, 
oh wow, this is a bit too overwhelming for me. I just want to get one property. Why are you limiting yourself to that? This is the plan. It's 10 years, right? Relax, it's 10 years. What you're going to do in 10 years, you're going to achieve a lot. But if you don't have that plan, you'll probably only buy one property in 10 years because you get over it. But if you've got this plan in your head, you stick that, uh, that 10 year acquisition strategy on the fridge every single day. You wake up, get your coffee, get the milk out of the fridge and you go, wow, all right, I've got to get look at number two and number three and number four and number five and it's in your face every single day. All of a sudden it's that law of attraction, right? Like it's in your mind and you know you've got to hit it. And you know what? Most of the time people will hit it because us as human beings, we want to hit targets. It's what we, what, it, it's what feels good. Yeah, it satisfies you, right? So they're, they're looking at the fridge and, and at the map of the 10 properties, seeing the 10th property and only having one on, or zero and going, how the, how the hell am I gonna get there? They're not breaking it down to achievable. I think that's the thing. They have to be achievable goals that you're going to strive towards, achieve and move on from. So uh, really you have to break it down. Well, that's the definition of a plan, right, Sam? And most people don't have a plan. Like, what's your plan, guys? What are you gonna do? What are you actually going to do financially? Like, if, if something occurs where you need 50, 100, $200,000 to pay a bill, it will happen. It will happen. Your parents will get sick. They will need you, right? I, I read an, an interesting article um, this morning on millennials not being able to get into the property market, right? Like, it's just every year, it's just, Home ownership is diminishing, right? It's gone from like, I don't know, 46% down to 32% and, you know, it, and it's looking to get lower and lower and lower. And the, the article states that, you know, millennials are gonna find it very, very difficult to, to build wealth, mm -hmm. right? Like we've, we're talking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm heading the millennials, I'm probably one of the oldest ones, but, um, you know, 35 and under, yeah. Uh, these people are going to find it very hard to buy houses, get investment properties, and just ultimately build wealth. And what they're doing is they're increasing student debt, increasing consumer uh, spending, and it's it's ultimately just going to uh, it's going to be a bad time between the ages of say 25 till say 50 until their parents cark it, and then obviously they inherit some some wealth, right? But but between the ages of 25 and 50 are the most important years of your life to, to really make something uh, of yourself, right? So we need to, uh, I guess, get the message across to the millennials to say, look, without these goals and targets, you're not gonna really, you're not gonna build wealth. You, I don't know anyone who has built a substantial amount of wealth that hasn't had goals and targets put in front of them. Yeah, and I guess that's what, here, what, what we are here for, uh, to be that kind of, team or partner in your plan and, and yeah, call upon our experiences and our knowledge in what we do. If that's where you want to go down, if accumulating property is what you want to do, which can grow your wealth. Well, most of, our, if, most of our viewers, that's, you know, if, if you're watching this, um, this podcast or listening to this podcast, you want to build a property portfolio, you want to build wealth, right? So this is coming from someone who has come from nothing, like you and I, we've both come from nothing, man. Like we, 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 we really, really like just started at zero and we, we got no inheritance, none of that. And we've built wealth along the way. And you know, we've done it in, I feel like a short period of time, but now, yesterday was the best time to start really, you know, when it comes to building wealth and, and setting goals. And I guess setting goals and targets is your first step, right? Like what should the first goal be? We're talking to, you know, the millennial generation who just don't know where to start, like what should the first step be? Well, I reckon to the listeners would be talking to someone, right, about their exact situation because you can action some things uh, if you have the uh, know-how because some people don't even know where they're going wrong. That's why they're in the situation. So maybe if you get a second opinion, talk to someone within your network or us and we can help you identify where you're going wrong and put you in another sort of direction to get on that road to accumulating the properties. Right? Well, so let's, let's, let's give our listeners and viewers uh, an example, right? So I feel like a really good example for the really younger generation yeah. is to work on their credit score. Yeah. So a credit score is uh, anywhere from, I think, 350 to 850, isn't it, Sam? Something, Something like that. So anything above 750 is, is, is really good. I think I'm at like 780, 790 or something like that, right? Which is quite impressive. <laughs> but 
In saying that, like credit scores and you being an accountant, Sam, yeah. reviewing people's paperwork and their and and and, and their finances, yeah. you're, you you would see that you know, how, how that affects you 100%. later on in life. And some of these really bad decisions that these millennials are making now are really, really going to impact them negatively moving forward. So I think that's one of the first things. Your goal should be getting a very strong credit score and anyone can do that. Yeah. And you can look, you can check it for free, right, Sam? What, like there's websites. Vita, 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 Vita. Vita. or whatever. Even if you just talk to your broker. Yeah. So if you, if you have a finance broker, if you need anyone, let us know. We have some, uh, we have a good bloke in our network. Um, but yeah, they'll be able to help you as well. So guys, uh, for you guys who are listening now or watching now, I, I highly recommend you to do some homework, mm. right? And go and check your credit score, yeah. right? I actually, I should do that after this and find out what my actual number is. And we'd love to hear from you guys because if it's low, let's help you getting that back up again. Because you want it to be about 700 plus to be able to get some loans and really sort of uh, be able to leverage yourself into, into some you know, good debt. Put it this way, it's probably the most vital thing, right? Because as we touched on many episodes ago and pretty much every episode since, we are a business, right? In the eyes of the bank. So if we don't have that good credit score, they're not gonna give us money. Mm -hmm. And if your goal is to accumulate property and you have a bad credit score, you're not gonna get any properties, right? Yeah. So it's fundamental. And it just roadblocks it's fundam you, right? Fundamental. It's right. fundamental. And that's why I wanted to give an example of right at the beginning of what yeah. can people do as a goal if they're just starting out. And I think that's number one. Yeah. Because without a credit score, like you're, you, you, you're nothing, yeah. right? In the bank size, you're nothing. Doesn't matter if you scored 100 in your HSC at high school, mm -hmm. right? They don't care about that. Mm -hmm. They care about your credit score. Ability right? to repay a loan. That's, that's it. Right. That's, what, that's what we're doing here. We're, we're showing the bank that we can take on debt and we can manage that debt. Otherwise, they're not going to give us money. That's and it. and you know what's funny, Sam? Like, there's a lot of people out there, and I see the younger generations, the people in their twenties, where they are going, okay, well, you know, I'm never going to be able to buy a house, so I'm never going to be able to buy an investment, and all of that sort of thing. And they're going, all right, they're going the other way, right? They're spending money on liabilities. They they're doing the whole. So they've given up. Is that what you sort? They I go, feel like they I can't have. be bothered. It's not going to happen. Well, I'm going to go. It's going. Yeah, you're right. Like it's going back to that uh, that generation where they're going, okay, well, it's too hard to get in. My parents are baby boomers. They've got a bit of wealth. I know that I'll inherit, you know, some of, you know, their property when they go. And so what they're doing is they're just going, okay, well, I'm going to enjoy now and, you know, cruise up until that occurs because that's their plan, yeah. right? That's a lot of people's plan. And I, it, 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 it's a flawed plan. The plan yeah. is dependent upon someone else. That's right. So they're not taking control. Have, that's right. They're not, they're not taking control of their futures. And, you know, uh, I guess that's why we, we deal with a lot of people who uh, aren't looking at getting that inheritance. Like, oh, I know I'm not, so I had to take control. And that's, that's where you want to be. You want to stand on your own two feet, build your own wealth, feed your family, be able to provide, and your legacy will live on as well, right? Like, I've built indestructible wealth to the point that is anything that would happen to me right? My wife's going to get looked after. My family's going to get looked after. And that's really important to me because I want to know that I've made an impact, yeah. right? That I've, I've done something to really, really uh, make a difference in the world rather than just look after myself. Because I feel like people just get too selfish and they just think, oh, well, I don't need to do that. Yeah. I think poor people, as in people that with no money, with no wealth, are very selfish people. Because what they're doing is they're only worried about themselves, mm -hmm. right? Like we all know people that don't have money right? Can they help you? Right? If you are in trouble, can they help you? They, they can't, right? But they can help themselves, right? Because they're just worried about, you know, the two inches in front of them and that's it, right? A radius, two inches, two inches radius around them, right? That's, that's all they, they, they're worried about. But if you start going, okay, well, I want to change the world, right? I want to uh, look after my family. I want to donate to charity. I want to help people in need. I want to help others, right? Then all of a sudden, when you're, you're, you're building your wealth out, you're starting to think about everyone else. And if something was to happen to you, right, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to last forever. Yeah. That's what you should be really working towards, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the end goal. That is pretty much the end goal. Core reasons. Core reasons behind goals, right? Core reasons. And I think we just touched on it just We then. explored that So for, for me, for example, my core reason is my family. My core reason is to help others. My core reason is to leave a legacy so that, you know, uh, the wealth that I have... Um, 
accumulated can be passed on down to generations, right, and to others, and really, you know, have a positive impact on, on the community. It sounds like you're trying to make the most of your life. You're not trying to waste it. I'm right. trying to squeeze as much, as much juice as you... out, of it, out of it as I can, right? So, so you have dreams that you're trying to achieve. And yeah, like if I, 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 I say this to, to, to my wife all the time. If I get hit by a bus tomorrow, right, I want to know that I've done everything I can to contribute to this world, right? And I think we live in a very selfish society, a very greedy society, um, especially here in Australia where, you know, where everyone's quite entitled. Um, and, we, you know, we are the lucky nation, right? We're the lucky country. And uh, sometimes we forget, like, there's some really, really uh, poorer countries out there in the world that require our help, uh, require our expertise, our knowledge um, and our money to help them live a better life, right? Because we all live quite a really good life here and we become very spoiled. And quite lazy, would you say? Do you think we've become a bit of a lazy nation? Very lazy because, you know, we've got, we've, we've got people here that, you know, would prefer to go on JobKeeper or JobSeeker or whatever it's called than to go to work. Like we've got people pushing for those government handouts rather than going to work and having a job. Right, so working uh, in, in this country the, the is, is, is looked at as beneath them. And you know, I know back from, from where my family's from in Malaysia, a job is like gold. It's a golden ticket to have a job. Like you wouldn't even dream of going, you know, I'm just gonna wait for the government because the government there doesn't help you out. So you're forced into going, I really value work, right? And I feel like people don't value work that much. It's here. a big contrast because Australia is known around the world for people coming here to make a better life, right? So they can see it from the outside view of how good Australia can be and what you could achieve here. But I guess some of us here, we take that for granted and don't pursue or don't try and achieve, right? We, we get too uh, content with the life and a lifestyle that we have, which is pretty good. We're sport. We're, We're sport. sport. You don't have yeah. to work too hard to enjoy a good life. But if you really want to achieve big things like yourself, like we're trying to do with all your clients out there, uh, yeah, you really have to apply yourself. So what I want to talk about is why is it important to think big when setting goals? Like, what, what, why should we be expanding our minds when we're, we're setting goals? Like, I feel that people don't think big enough. Yeah. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about Australia and, you know, how people think here. And this is not a bagging Australia <laughs> podcast, right? Because it might sound like it because our listeners aren't like that. Our listeners aren't selfish. They're looking at growing their wealth. They're looking at changing the world. So let's talk more about how do we do that, right? And I think one of the biggest things for me is that when I expanded my mind, when I started thinking bigger, I started, uh, you know, I guess plotting out bigger goals, um, my network started to open up, okay. right? And I started to meet better people and I started to get the help that I required to get to where I wanted to go. So they sort of, you attracted them along your journey, right? So you recruited these other people that were helping you try and achieve what, you, what, you, what your goal was. What well, it's, the old, it's the old saying of your network is your net worth. So you've seen that firsthand? A hundred percent. And it's only happened since I've really, really expanded, um, you know, the, the, the goals, the, the target. The target's so much bigger now. And as, when the target's so big, all of a sudden you get excited every morning. Like I'm up at 5 a.m. every morning going, or I can't wait to start the day, right? Because I know that I'm, I'm, I'm working towards my so dreams. So it's energized you, yeah. is that what you'd say? Yeah. The bigger the goal, because it's, it's maybe me. harder to achieve it's given you more energy to get there. I'm excited, right? I'm excited. And this is where I say to people, the payoff needs to be big. Yeah. Like it can't just be, oh, I'm going to get a $300,000 property and just go, yeah, no worries. Or I'm going to get two or three investments. That's going to be enough, right? Yeah. It's got to be the 10 year acquisition strategy. So that at the end of the 10 years, the, the portfolio is worth $10 million. Now to, 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 to someone who comes from nothing, yeah. right? Like it's, massive, yeah. it's, such, it, it's such an exciting goal. Mm. Right? It's, if, you, if you reach that, that is a massive achievement. Some people will reach it, some people won't, right? But it doesn't matter. If you're working towards it, all of a sudden, every morning, you know it's gonna be worth it. Yeah. You're just like, you're up, you're up, you're up. And you're like, how do I get there? Who's got my money so I can go and, 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 and hit this goal? <laughs> I've gotta get one property a year for 10 years. I'm due, yeah. 
right? Yeah. But let's say you go July, every July, you, you gotta buy a property. Gets to June and you're like, oh my God, I've got to get this deposit, <laughs> I've gotta find it from somewhere, yeah. right? Like you've got to put yourself under that That's pressure. That's keeping you on your toes. And then if you, let's say you get to property three or property four, and we're just using property as an example here, right? But if you hit those targets, how good does it feel? Oh, right? amazing. Everybody think about that right now, right? The last time you hit a target, did you feel good? Right? And the target could be something as simple as cleaning your room. Your target for the weekend was to clean your room, right? And then you hit that target. How good do you feel? Right? You've achieved something. So imagine if you buy a property, one, every, ten, uh, every, every year for 10 years, and you've got 10 properties worth $10 million, even $5 million. Let's just say it's worth, the portfolio is worth $5 million. How good are you going to feel? You'll prove, your, you'll prove to yourself, right? I think it'll be a lot of, um, what, what's that word? Um, you'd uh, validate yourself and what you've been trying to do. So I think it'd be very, very rewarding for you if you can achieve that. And think about so many people, they, they, they don't set that goal. You know why? Because they don't, they don't want to look stupid. Yeah. They don't want to look stupid. They're like, oh, you know, like, I'll just say that I want to get a couple of investment properties because it's cool to be average. And they don't want to fail. Yeah, they don't want to fail themselves. They don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to uh, fall down and yeah. they don't want to look like, say, a so-called idiot if they, if they, if they don't hit that target. Um, and, and they don't want to put themselves out there, right? Because then people will go, oh, why would you do that? And everyone, you know, I've copped it my whole life. You know, people would say, Zah, why don't you just settle down and just be happy with what you have? Why do you keep pushing so hard? You know, you, you're sort of just, you know, you're hitting your head against a brick wall. Why would you do it? And you know what? Most average people are going to say that. Yeah right and i blocked out that noise and i thought you know what no i've got this target and i'm pushing towards it and i don't care what people say right and i've hit it and I, you know i've got new targets now i've got new goals now and there's bigger reasons behind it which has expanded my network expanded my mind right and i advise everyone to do it right i advise everyone to block out the noise set set these like these massive goals these massive targets and you know, start working towards them yeah. because every day is an opportunity to work towards it. Like we've got a lot of days on this planet. Yeah. Use every single one of them to push towards that target. It's not only blocking out the noise, like you said, but it's getting the people. See, you eliminated those negative people. You need people that are positive and know what they're doing or just who are there for a soundboard to help you keep going, right? So did you, did you call upon more positively minded people during those times when you had to eliminate those other negative minded people? I cleaned out a lot of people, lot of Sam. People. I had to clean out a so lot of people. So it's quite a vital thing I to do, I had toxic right? business partnerships, yeah. toxic clients, toxic friends. Like, you've got to get rid of these people. You've got to do a clean out. Like, and family are going to be like that as well. Like, I've got family who hate my guts, really? right? They hate me. <laughs> they might not say it, uh -huh. right? But they don't support my businesses. Yeah. They don't uh, congratulate me. They say nothing positive about what I'm doing, what I'm trying to, how I'm trying to change the world. And it's really funny, right? Because I'm, I'm doing this for everybody else, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? At the end of the day, it's not really myself. Yeah. Like my bills are taken care of. Um, you can't take all this when you die, right? No, it's going so to someone else. I really want to share it. I really, really want to share it, yeah. right? But it's hard to share it with people that hate on you, right? And we, you, you'll always get your fair share of haters when you're trying to do something special. It always happens. You're trying to build a property portfolio, multi-million dollar portfolio, people are going to hate on you and they're not going to want you to do it. What do you think that stems from? Are they... Jealousy. Jealous. Jealousy. Um, it's, it stems from them feeling guilty that they haven't done it they're themselves. They're not trying it themselves. Or, or, or you know, it's, it, it's an easy way out. I find it's very easy to complain and be negative than it is to be supportive and, and positive. It's just, it, it takes effort to be positive. It takes effort to support others, right? But you've got to be conscious of that because at the end of the day, it's like a muscle. If you continuously support one another and you continuously offer positive feedback, what will happen is that you'll, you'll, you'll attract more positivity in your life. If you spend your time talking about other people and how toxic people are and how, how, how um, you know, just talking down on people and you spend the majority of your time doing that, you're going to attract negativity. And you're going to be simple. negative yourself, right? And you're not going to hit your goals. That's what you're focusing on. You're not going to hit your goals, yeah. right? And if you want to hit your goals, you need to start being positive. You're not, you need to start attracting better people in your life to help drive you towards that goal. I wouldn't be where I am today without my team, right? Like I wouldn't be here with, today without you, Sam. You know what I mean? Like you've helped me out a lot as well. So you're part of my team and we, we, we need to stick together. Yeah.
right? So for you guys that are listening, um, I would highly recommend upgrade your network because that's going to help push towards your goal. Yeah, it's a very critical thing. Uh, among all the other financial and other topics and goals and dreams that we talk about, having the right people is, uh, is vital, man. Very, very vital. They're going to help you get there. They're going to help you get there. I think one of the biggest things um, with, with, with goals, right, uh, that people don't do, and I'm guilty of this, is I don't celebrate the, the, the wins. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, all right, oh, we won something. We've achieved it. What's next? Do you know what I mean? Where's the next property? Or what's the, what's the, next, um, what's the next deal we're going to do? And, you know, I start raising the bar and start looking at, okay, bigger numbers and all of those sort of things. And I think that's unhealthy. What I think I should do more of, and I, and I advise other people to do as yeah. well, is celebrate the wins. Because you're not going to get that time back. Now, if you don't celebrate the wins, I think what's going to happen is that you, you, you're just going to, you're not going to get that motivation. The momentum. Yeah. Will drop. Like it's really important to remember the wins. You know what I mean? Because if you remember the wins, then every time you go and work towards the next thing, you're going to be really motivated because you're going to go, yeah, when I achieve this, we're going to celebrate. And I think that's really important. So I don't do it enough. I usually just go, okay, what's the next deal? Right? But what we've got to do is go, okay, let's, let's celebrate the wins. That's our sixth podcast. We haven't celebrated yet. What are we doing? <laughs> we need to pull we out a cake. Huh? We, need, we need a cake. <laughs> oh. So one of the, one, one, another thing we need to talk about is asking for help, I guess. Yeah. And I think you talk about this all the time, Sam. You yeah. talk about, okay, don't be afraid to ask for help. Reach out. Don't be reactive is the key thing. So don't be reactive. Don't just sit in the corner. Don't talk to anyone. Don't pick up the phone. Talk to if, Even if you've got an accountant, talk to him. Or, or a property man, talk to him. With whatever you're thinking, whatever you're trying to achieve, get other people's opinions, right? You need those, you need those other people and the, their knowledge and experience to help you go through, right? So. I've, got, I've got like obviously a team of people that help me uh, with all of my property deals and every single deal I do for myself personally, I will call three people, uh -huh. right? And three people within my team, you'd be one of them, Sam, and I'd, just, I'd run the deal by you. And then uh, if I feel like I need another opinion, yeah. I'll call another professional in. And now these are people aren't, who, who are doing what I'm doing, yeah. right? These aren't people that are just, you know, I'm not calling just my mum and dad to, to, for, for help. It's, people it's like, with the experience, Yeah, right? they've done it before. I look up to these guys. They're almost like, like mentors to me. So I, I, I do reach out, right? And, you know, when you're talking property, for example, they're multi-million dollar assets, right? Like you don't, you don't want to stuff it up. Right. So, you know, leaning on the right people for, these, for, for your goals is, is really important. And we, we keep bringing it back to that, right? Your team, yep. your network, but you know, repetition is king. You need, you, need to, you need to hold that into importance. In our line of work and what we do, who, who do you think the, the key type of people you should try and have in your network would be to help you achieve these goals? Look, apart, apart from, um, if we're talking like finance and property, right? If you, if you want to build, your, your build wealth, mm. I think um, besides people like us who, you know, I'm, I'm a property investment expert, uh, yourself, a uh, tax accountant, uh, you've got mortgage brokers, your solicitor, um, your conveyancer, um, you know, you need a contractor who knows building and all of that sort of thing. So, you know, when you get into the property game, you start building these team of experts around you that you can lean on, people that you can trust also that don't have a vested interest in anything uh, because a lot of people will just, I guess, masquerade as salespeople and just try and get you into their products. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to start building a team. And I guess that's the beauty of being involved with guys like us. We've got, we've got that team ready to go. That's right. That's what our clients do. They leverage off our team. They leverage off our network. So, I mean, they pay a fee, but you know, they get so much more in return. It's like a one-stop shop, right? If you're trying to get into the property game or trying to accumulate more properties within your portfolio, we are the the people that have those connections that can help you along mm. the way. So, so I guess um, the goals and targets can be fun. I think we opened up the the, the podcast about uh, goals and targets being a little bit boring, and uh, <laughs> people don't they tend to sweep it under the tar uh, carpet. Yeah. But I think one of the most uh, special things that I've done is I've sh I've shared my goals and targets with the people that I love. And they've helped me achieve them. So this is more so like my wife or my business partners where, you know, we've all worked towards something and it's, it, it becomes like a game, right? Like the struggle is actually the fun part. Like it's funny because, um, you know, 
when, when you're in it, when you're in the struggle, you just think, okay, oh, that's the worst time. Right? Yeah, it's like hard. I just, I wish this is going to get better. <laughs> like we just don't have money to pay the bills. We can't afford rent and all of that sort of thing. And, you know, if you do that with other people that are close to you, that are going through the war with you, you know, they, they're in the battle with you, then it becomes very special. Because when you actually achieve it, you have those memories to look back on. And I miss the days where I used to be up till two, three in the morning working in my shop or whatever, working on marketing plans and you know, not having even any money to pay for this office, right? I remember just yeah. doing anything I could just to pay the bills. And you know what? Those were the days. Like I, I really do miss those days. So the days of struggle, guys, the, you, who, you guys who are listening, remember that the, 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 the hard times, they're the times, they're the memories. It's going to make that achievement more sweeter. Yeah, right? you'll take that forever. You'll take that forever. So that's why even more so, set unrealistic goals and do whatever you can to get there, right? Because it's not hitting the goal that's the good part. It's the journey in between. It's what you have to go through. It's what you experience. It's what you learn along the way. It's the people that you meet, right? The skills that you acquire. Like there are so many beautiful things that happen in that journey. Right, and then when you hit the goal, it's like, okay, oh, well, what do I do now? I need to, I need to set a bigger goal. Right, you're gonna set, you're gonna set, you are going to set a bigger goal anyway. Right, like it's always going to happen. It's not always going to be, all right, we're gonna hit this goal, and I'm gonna put my feet up, and you know, go to Fiji for for six months and just do nothing for the rest of my life. Right, like it's not, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. You're gonna hit that goal, and you're gonna go, okay, what's next? What am I doing? Right, now? but at least you're doing something productive. Right? At least you're thinking about your family. At least you're thinking of others. At least you're thinking about building a legacy, building that wealth, that indestructible wealth that's gonna look after you for, for lifetimes, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. That's it down. for another podcast, the Money Club series. Um, we appreciate you guys listening and viewing for you guys that are viewing the video. We, um, we will be back I think we're going to do this every fortnight now. Fortnight, yeah. So number seven will be in another fortnight. So we appreciate you guys listening and viewing. See you soon. See you guys.